Hello everyone, my name is Harini and I'm a second year PhD scholar at Edinburgh Napier University. Today I'm going to share with you the findings of my scoping review on challenges and opportunities in the service delivery of direct hearing healthcare. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll be beginning with a broad overview of the current landscape of hearing healthcare. Next we'll dive into the methodology and discussion of the results. So let's begin with the story. Uh, this is John. He is a 65-year-old retired teacher and he notices his hearing declining over years, but it took him nearly a decade to seek help for his hearing loss. So why? There were many barriers that John faced, including long waiting times to the GP. Uh, he wasn't given a timely referral to the audiologist. The cost of the devices were high that he couldn't afford it. And since he lives in the countryside, he had to visit the specialist multiple times. So all these barriers were daunting him that it took him over a decade to seek treatment for his hearing problems. And unfortunately, his experience is not unique and it mirrors that of a million people worldwide. So globally, over 5% of the population lives with some degree of hearing loss, but yet only 11% of those who actually need it use them. So these stats reveal that there is a significant gap in the service delivery and the accessibility. So why do so many individuals who need the hearing aid go without using them. The reasons are multifaceted and not just limited to those mentioned on the screens, but these are some of the major barriers that contribute to the delay in seeking rehabilitation assistance, which is on an average over nine years for an adult experiencing hearing loss. So the innovations in response to these barriers, there have been significant innovations in hearing healthcare industry. So teleaudiology services providing remote consultations, community delivered healthcare systems and direct delivery of hearing healthcare. So the scoping review focuses on direct delivery of hearing healthcare, which is when an individual with a perceived hearing loss will, will be able to obtain a hearing aid without the need of a professional consult. So this was developed to enhance the accessibility of hearing care and the scoping review focuses on this specific innovation. So what is the need for this research? So direct hearing healthcare was developed to address the barriers in traditional model. So the effectiveness of this innovation needs to be evaluated to inform policy and the evidence-based practice. So the ultimate goal is to enhance the accessibility and address all the barriers providing uh, hearing care for the individuals in need. So the main aim of the scoping review was to address the gaps in the direct delivery of hearing healthcare. Uh, the scoping review addresses the critical research question on what is the current state of evidence on the service delivery of direct, direct delivery of hearing healthcare and what are the challenges on, and opportunities associated. So to ensure transparency and rigor in our review process, we registered our protocol with the Open Science Framework. You can check that out with the uh, QR code link given below. So given the limited research in this area, our eligibility criteria was pretty broad. So we included studies involving users with hearing loss and also healthcare providers from a global healthcare and an audiology sector. Um, our literature search was exhaustive, covering majority of the databases with clear literature, conference proceedings, and reference list. So we also developed a targeted search strategy. So initially, we identified 5,896 articles from the databases and the clear literature. And there were two independent reviewers who screened the title and the abstract. And finally, we ended up with 14 articles. So the geographical distribution of the studies, there were 11 studies from the US and one study from the UK, one from New Zealand and one from Australia. Moving on to the discussion of the results, uh, we look at the barriers first. One of the significant barriers was the lack of professional support. There were studies indicating that the users without a professional guidance tend to use their hearing aids less. So additionally, both patient and audiologist expressed concerns about missing critical health conditions without a professional oversight. The second one was the safety concerns that were reported in both patient and professional reported studies. So safety concerns were prevalent with risks such as missing ear disorders and worries about the safe usage of devices and post maintenance care. A significant majority of healthcare professionals highlighted that uh, there could be potential delays in diagnosing treatable ear conditions due to this type of service delivery. Another barrier was limited understanding and awareness of technology. So there were many studies that reported that patients were unaware that hearing aids could be purchased online. And even if they do, they often did not have the knowledge to select the appropriate devices. The next barrier that emerged was trust issues. And the patient, a lot of patients reported fearing of online scammers and they preferred direct interactions with manufacturers. There were many audiology reported surveys also expressed distrust in online retailers. 
Few studies reported that consumers who had a positive experience of purchasing other medical devices online were more likely to use this type of service delivery. Moving on to the opportunities. So on the flip side, accessibility is a major, major opportunity that emerged. Direct hearing healthcare services can be benefit to those who are immobile or those who live in remote areas by providing them a convenient access to information and remote support. The next one was cost savings. And many consumers reported that uh, they see a cost benefit of purchasing a hearing aid online. And this model could be especially appealing to those who have a lower income or those without a hearing insurance uh, coverage. The next one was integrating these services into existing clinical practice. So a few consumers reported survey mentioned the availability of a local audiologist to address the consumer concerns and clinics which can offer unbundled services and train staff for fitting and programming. So many studies reported necessity for a hybrid model where the audiologist could provide a remote support and a follow-up care, ensuring that the patients receive the benefits of a professional expertise even in this type of service delivery model. The next one was an interprofessional collaboration. So there were studies reporting that pharmacists show that they can play an essential role in hearing care from an initial recognition of a hearing loss to assisting a patient in choosing uh, the devices and also patient education, thereby enhancing the accessibility and the efficiency of the hearing care. The last one was the patient education, which also emerged as an opportunity. There were many studies reporting the development of a patient education program to inform patients on existing technology and practice. Moving on to the conclusion, so the current scoping review identified key barriers and opportunities in direct hearing healthcare services. So to sum up, barriers included a lack of professional support, concerns about the quality of care and limited patient education. However, there were significant opportunities that exist which can address these barriers such as increased accessibility, integrating professional support into these models and also interprofessional collaboration. So these findings highlight the areas for improvement and a potential growth within the direct delivery of hearing uh, service landscape. So in conclusion, uh, this scoping review highlights the essential opportunities that addresses the gaps in the direct delivery of hearing healthcare. So the next step would be uh, collecting a stakeholder perspective, both patient and provider perspective on this type of service delivery in countries where this model has still not been established. Uh, also developing hybrid models to involve professional support, uh, fostering interprofessional collaboration, and also integration of artificial intel intelligence in assessing the feasibility of um, this type of service delivery. So uh, I think these steps will ensure the successful implementation and sustainability of this direct delivery of hearing healthcare models. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all for your attention. And at this point, I would like to open the floor for any questions or comments you might have. Thank you.